Whoa. Look at all this good food. Get in my belly! I get questions all the time about what types of food do I bring on my bikepacking trips. Well, I'll keep it simple. Beans. Lots and lots of beans. You know what time it is? Burrito time. Frijoles. Beans. Frijoles. Beanie goodness. Bean time. I give you the sunset burrito. Oh, John, I have our beans. First off, I am not a nutritionist, but I know what I need to fuel my body. Everybody's body is different and your nutritional needs are different, so take what I say with a grain of salt. But this definitely works for me. I've been going on bikepacking adventures for about 15 years now, some month-long adventures where I am able to find this type of food and keep my body going and going and going. I am a vegetarian. I've been a vegetarian for 17 years, and I've been just fine doing ultra-endurance events. I get plenty of protein. People are always asking about protein. What about protein? No, you can only get that in meat, right? No, you can get protein in just about everything, especially vegetables. It is hard, I will say, to keep a healthy diet while you're on the road. And why is that? Well, when you're bike touring, a lot of times you're on roads or near highways and what's out there? Gas stations and you're stuck with gas station food. It works, it's not ideal, but it certainly tastes good. I love junk food after a long day of riding my bike, but I do try to put some nutrition into my body that's not ice cream or Snickers. Nothing like ice cream on a hot day. When I'm out there on a bike packing trip, I'm usually on my bike for about eight hours a day, pedaling, pedaling, pedaling. And depending on the terrain and how hot it is and other factors, you're burning a ton of calories. I would say anywhere between three and 5,000 calories a day. And you need to fill yourself back up. This is your gasolina. If you wanna wake up the next day and have energy, you need to be eating lots of food. And so now, we're gonna go through all the things that I always have on my bike at any time. Peanut buttery goodness. If you watch my videos, you know that I love frijoles, beans, bean burritos, Mexican food, I love it all. So, I always have a pack of tortillas on my bike, and tortillas are great because you can fold them and they don't get all smushed up like a loaf of bread does, and they last pretty long. So I always have a bag of tortillas, and of course I always have a couple cans of beans. And these beans are great refried ones. You can just like open up the can with a little Leatherman or a can opener, spread them on your tortilla. And I get this question a lot. They're like, how do you deal with the leftover beans in the can, Ryan, when you're done with a meal? Well, I eat the whole can every time I open up a can of beans. Again, you're hungry out there, you're gonna eat everything you can. If you wanna jazz up your burrito, of course you need a giant bottle of Valentina hot sauce, right? This is pretty big, actually. I would never bring this on a bike packing trip. It's a little bit too big. How about one like this? A little bit smaller. If you have uh, access to diced green chilies from Hatch, New Mexico, these are really good. Sometimes you wanna put cheese on your burrito. This is actually vegan cheese. It's pretty much not available anywhere except for hippie towns like Boulder. Definitely not in gas stations. And you can jazz up your burritos with all that good stuff. Oh, and sometimes an avocado. But you're really only gonna have access to avocados when you go to a grocery store. Gas stations aren't gonna have this kind of stuff. But gas stations will have bananas every now and then. You know, it's like the food that's always right near the cash register and they look really old. There's like apples and bananas sometimes and they're very expensive. But you know, like I said, I try to eat healthy, although it's very hard sometimes when you're just starving and, and tired and you just want ice cream or a candy bar. Um, and you're like, um, yeah, I don't think I want a banana. But these are really good. Potassium is great for helping with muscle cramps. Banana! See, I do eat healthy. And yes, I can eat bean burritos for lunch and dinner for day after day after day after day. I don't get sick of it. I lived in Honduras for two years in the Peace Corps and I love my beans. So I know a lot of you think it's ridiculous to eat the same food over and over and over and over, but I like it and it works. It's great nutrition. You get a lot of protein in the beans. You got some carbohydrates in your tortillas. Speaking of tortillas, these are also great for breakfast wraps. 
You know what I like to put in these? Sometimes peanut butter and jelly. You can also get Nutella. This is kind of the hippie version of Nutella. You can also put honey in there and maybe even some raisins. You know what I'm saying? And you just spread it in there and make yourself a nice little breakfast wrap that is pretty healthy. Except for the Nutella. That's not really healthy. But if you're using honey and peanut butter and fruits, you're pretty good. Oh man, look at that. That's the breakfast of champions right there. This is very important and I forgot to mention it earlier, but I do not bring a stove on my trips. I barely use the stove that I have in my own house. And the reason is I don't drink coffee in the mornings and I just can't be bothered to heat stuff up. It's just easy enough to open up a can of beans and put it on my tortillas. I will say that I do eat out quite a bit when I'm on bike tours. I go to restaurants for breakfast and dinner and that's where I get my hot meals. How you feeling, Ryan? I feel great, mainly because I just ate a whole plate of beans. You need to be careful though. It's so easy to walk in and just buy an awesome plate of food, but that will skyrocket your expenses really quickly. This is the happiest I've been in a long time. I have been dreaming about these beans. Let's talk about snacks, shall we? I know we all love snacks. That's what humans do. We love to snack, right? And I probably get most of my calories throughout the day just eating energy bars and stuff. And so I always have tons of Cliff Bars just hidden in all the crevices of my bike bag. So I always have an emergency ration when I need it. And I know people get sick of these and for good reason, they can be hard to put down at times. So it's smart sometimes to buy a variety of flavors so you don't totally just want to vomit every time you pull one of these out of your bags. I think it's one of my last Cliff Bars filled with hazelnut butter. Oh, oh <laughs> Now it's filled with dirt. There's about 250 calories in any given energy bar, and that's a lot. That's a, that's a quick amount of energy. Just scarf it down and you're good. I also love these type of things, these energy blocks. These taste like candy after a long day, you're hot. It's just nice to have some of this. A lot of these have salt in them, which is really, really important. You need to keep your salt levels up, otherwise you're just gonna sweat out all the hydration that you're putting into your body. What else do I have for snacks? Sometimes I do nuts, almonds, lots of protein in these bad boys, and I also love, whenever I have the opportunity, to buy Fig Newtons. They're so good and soft and they just melt in your mouth and they're somewhat healthy, somewhat. I would say all of this food is somewhat healthy. So where does all this food fit on your bike? And that's a very good question and I usually have trouble figuring it out every time I get ready for a bike packing trip. I've been doing this for a long time and I still have trouble fitting all this stuff because it's not just this. You have all your camping gear, you have your clothes, you have your cameras and batteries and other random things you find along the trail. So. Fitting all this can be an issue. And if you're bike touring in an area where you know that you can resupply every 50 miles, you really don't need to pack a ton of food at one time. But if you're somewhere remote and you have days between resupply, then you definitely need to pack a lot of food so you're not caught in the middle of nowhere with nothing but these. I mean, you would survive, but it would be gross. Welcome to my living room slash bike garage. I just wanted to show you where I put some of my food. This is my snack bag right up here on the handlebars. I'm sure all of you have something similar. You want your snacks to be easy to get while you're on the bike. You don't want to fish through you know, a bag and it's, your cliff bars are at the very bottom. That's a total bummer. You want it easy to access. And so that's where I put all my snacks. And you'd be surprised. You can probably fit about 15 cliff bars in one of those little bags. And most of my other food, goes in the frame bag. I like to keep my weight centered on the bike. It'll just give you more control to have your weight here rather than on the handlebars or, or way in the back. So this is where all the beans and the tortillas and other things go. If you have fresh fruit, obviously that's harder to pack because you know it's gonna get smashed around on your bike while it jiggles around. So bananas, apples, and stuff like that, you wanna pack in some sort of clothing, maybe near your sleeping bag. I usually keep bananas, not this many at a time, but just on my rear rack. Or when I buy those types of foods, I eat them right away because 
I'll be honest, I've definitely smashed my fair share of fruits and vegetables. That avocado looks pretty gnarly. Ew. I'm still gonna eat it. It's still good. While we're near the bike, the beautiful Priority 600X, ding, let's talk about hydration. This is paramount to a successful adventure. I made an entire video about hydration that I will link below, but in general, you need to drink a lot of water. Again, your body is working super hard and water is vital to digestion and circulation and everything. So make room for lots of water bottles on your bike. And if you want to get jazzy, you can put those little sports salt pills in there and that will help you retain more of the water that you're drinking. Oh yeah. Ooh. Now listen up. This might be the best tip I give you in this entire video. Pack a butter knife. Yes, a butter knife. And you might be thinking, well, that's kind of dumb. I'll have a Leatherman or a pocket knife with me. I'll just use that when I need to spread peanut butter. But the problem with that is those knives are really short and by the end of the peanut butter, you're digging in there and you're getting peanut butter all over your knuckles and you're gunking up your good Leatherman. This is so much better. Butter knife for the win. It works great for Nutella, peanut butter, beans, whatever you got. And it's metal. It's not gonna like break like cheap plastic stuff. Don't forget this. Whoa, what is this? This here is a gourmet breakfast crepe. It is Nutella and peanut butter and bananas and it is for you. All right, that is pretty much it. Remember, when you're on a bike packing trip, you're burning tons of calories. Your body's working overtime and you need to refill all those calories with some nutrients. Think about it this way. If you're on a road trip, you wouldn't fill your car full of cheap, crappy gasoline, right? You want the best for your car. Well, you want the best for your body as well because you wanna keep going day after day after day. And that junk food will definitely catch up to you. I can speak from experience. I think I might throw up. I've eaten seven pancakes today and a Mountain Dew. <laughs> it is hard, it's tricky, gas stations don't offer a lot of great options, but it can be done. One way to do it is to send yourself food ahead of time. I've actually never done this, but I definitely know people who have, and that will guarantee you a way to have the right foods that you know that your body loves. It can be a little tricky because you don't know exactly when you're going to be somewhere and maybe the package is late, but through hikers do this all the time and bike pack packers can too. So thank you so much for watching this video. If you found it informative, please click the like button and subscribe and tell all your friends and weird uncles and aunts to subscribe to my YouTube channel and stay tuned for more adventures with beans. Yummy gourmet burrito made by the burrito master.